This is RTV6 News at 7, working for you. Good evening, I'm Rafael Sanchez, and now at 7, we're looking towards the heavens because we could need some rain. Like right now, we may get it soon. Storm Team 6 Chief Meteorologist Kevin Gregory with the latest. Kevin, is there anything on the radar? Uh, there is, but it will not be a delivery for everyone. We've got some color here, meaning that the intensity of the rain showers is there as well. Nice little downpour. This is south of Greencastle and Culverdale, north of Spencer, along 231. It will move into Morgan County near Paragon, and then also Martinsville southern portion and you see this is kind of broken showers back to the west at times produced some lightning but not been able to sustain lightning but if you hear thunder that's what you're hearing with some thunderstorms kind of fading though through the evening once we get close to sunset and we're getting there remember it's about 7:40, then we'll start to see these wind down there's a cold front that is going to spark these isolated showers and thunder showers morgan county maybe through uh, johnson and into shelby county as well you can see that's a good looking right there. I love that. All those clouds and then look at the burst of sunshine right through there. Temperatures there in the 70s now. They'll stay tonight into the 60s for a while and then drop into the 50s tomorrow morning. We'll see a wind shift overnight that brings the cooler temperatures. Kevin, thank you so much. Our neighborhood is coming together to put a stop to a recent rash of crimes in their north side neighborhood. This ring doorbell video shows a package theft near 40th and Graceland. According to Metro Police online data, there have been dozens of crimes that include thefts and burglaries in Butler Tarkington this month alone. Bridget Clark lives in the Butler Tarkington neighborhood. She's taking action by reaching out to police and creating a neighborhood crime watch. As we speak, the group is holding its second meeting. This next meeting is really going to kind of solidify our efforts and um, designate the black captains in order to communicate information to their neighbors and keep people safe and um, discuss the crime trends in the area and how we can protect ourselves um, going forward. Neighborhood Crime Watch groups help police by observing and reporting crimes. And we have a breakdown on the RTV6 app and our website, theindychannel.com, about how you can start your own Crime Watch group to keep your neighborhood safe every day. And right now, police want to find this man who they say assaulted his own mother, sending her to the hospital in critical condition. This is 44-year-old Bobby Gibson Jr. Indianapolis police say they found a woman with blunt force trauma to her body in a home on South State Street yesterday. Now, investigators say Gibson fled the scene just beforehand in a silver Chevy Malibu. If you know where Gibson is, you're asked to contact police. We have all of that information in this story on the RTV6 app. What first was thought to be a crash on the interstate has now been called an act of murder. Indiana State Police responded to a two-vehicle crash on I-70 West on Saturday night. 27-year-old De Devin Anderson was found dead in his car, and investigators thought it was from the crash. Meanwhile, the second driver, 24-year-old Juan Gerardo Vivas, was taken to the hospital with injuries. Now, during Anderson's autopsy this week, they found a bullet inside his head. Investigators believe Vivas fired at Anderson while they were driving, their cars colliding, as a result, new today, two educators will be allowed to return to school after being on paid administrative leave for several months. The Northwest Hendricks County School Board voted last night to allow Tri-West High School Athletic Director Nathan Bagley to return to his position, as well as Dean of Students Stacy Bagley. The board went against the administration's recommendation to cancel their teaching contracts. They were placed on administrative leave back in July in connection with a coach that is accused of sexual misconduct with the student. As some have criticized school leaders for not reporting the allegations, the school board released a statement to RTV6 saying they made the decision to keep the Bagleys based on the preponderance of the evidence. The CEO of a major CE cigarette company, Juul, is now stepping down. It is the latest development in the controversy over vaping, which has now been linked to nine deaths and hundreds of lung illnesses across our country. And the governor of Massachusetts has officially declared vaping a public health emergency, declaring a four-month ban on all vaping sales, including THC. This as Congress hears people like Ruby Johnson testify about her daughter's near-death experience linked to vaping. 
Her pulmonologist said that he feared had we waited another 24 hours to seek medical attention, she'd most likely have been unresponsive on a ventilator. I'll never forget watching her cry that she literally couldn't breathe without excruciating pain. The latest data says more than one in four high school students are reportedly using e-cigarettes, something Juul is promising to address as the company swaps out its CEO. Now, the company is stopping all TV, print, and digital advertising and promising to comply with all federal regulations. Now at 7, President Trump is under fire. A call between him and the president of the Ukraine and a whistleblower complaint have triggered an impeachment probe. ABC's Rachel Scott is on Capitol Hill with the president's response and what comes next. Democrats now say they have more evidence to make a Morning, case everyone. for impeachment and it was voluntarily handed over to them by the president. That is textbook abuse of power and the transcripts have become Exhibit A. Like any mafia boss, the president didn't need to say, that's a nice country you have. It'd be a shame if something happened to it. The White House releasing what they describe as an unredacted transcript of a call that is front and center of an impeachment inquiry launched by House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. No one is above the law. The document reveals the president repeatedly urged the president of Ukraine to work with his personal lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, to help investigate his potential 2020 rival, Joe Biden, and his son who had business interests there. President Trump, who continues to deny any wrongdoing, insisting a recent move to halt aid to Ukraine was not an attempt to pressure the country's leader. You take a look at that call, it was perfect. I didn't do it, there was no quid pro quo. Republicans backing him up. From my point of view, to impeach any president over a phone call like this would be insane. But that call is believed to be tied to a whistleblower's complaint that the inspector general found to be of urgent concern and credible. As this historic showdown between the president and lawmakers unfolds in Washington, the president sits down with the world leader who was on the other end of that phone call. I think, and you read it, that nobody pushed it. Pushed me, yes. In other words, no pressure. Lawmakers on both sides of the aisle have been fighting to see that whistleblower complaint, not just the transcript from the White House. Well, it will be turned over to the House Intelligence Committee today, available for reading in a secure room in the basement of the Capitol. Rachel Scott, ABC News, Capitol Hill. So as this story develops, Indiana politicians have been falling along party lines when it comes to supporting the impeachment inquiry or defending Mr. Trump. Today, Attorney General Curtis Hill released a statement saying in part, the American people may now be forced to watch their Congress waste the next several months with yet another investigation, the modern equivalent of a circus sideshow. And Congressman Andre Carson tweeted this video of his speech on the House floor, urging his fellow lawmakers to support the resolution demanding the White House release the whistleblower complaint to Congress. Carson says, quote, it's about ensuring this president is not above the law. RTV6's Hiring Hoosiers is aimed at, of course, at helping you find jobs, skills, and resources. And today, Mario Brothers, Space Invaders, Zelda, Rock Band, they're all video games played over the decades. And growing up in this world full of technology, students are now hoping to use their own creativity to build their own video games. RTV6's Aaron Lish has more. Maybe you hop on your Xbox or old Nintendo 64, your phone or even your computer and play a little bit of video games to pass the time away. Students in programming are hoping to create some video games that you will come to play and love. I love video games. I was born into a society that loves to play with electronics. Students sit at their computers and create fully developed video games. I've always just been inspired to try and make my own video games because when I play video games, like, you know what, I think I, I have some ideas that could you know, work better for that. Which allows them to use their imagination. When you're here, like, in real life, you're restricted by things such as, like, gravity, you know, but in the virtual world, you can do anything you want. They develop storylines and use Unity 3D software to program the games. Now, you know, you can uh, double click that and bring it from 90 frames out to 300. Instructors say this way of teaching gets kids excited about coding, which is a staple in computer technology. So it's kind of a way to get them into the nitty gritty first, learn how to code, learn how to design. Then they get to make a video game. So it makes them want to learn all the aspects of the field. 
as students code and build, they're adding to their resume, and it's getting them excited for a career in the video game industry. I really just want to be on a team that um, we all code together and we make great games that I think everyone will enjoy. Working for you, Aaron Lish, RTV6. Aaron, thank you so much. Still ahead on the news at 7. From your pets to your skin, CBD is found in all sorts of products these days. But one of the products claims is running into some real serious trouble. That's all ahead on the news at 7, right here on RTV6. Working for you. The past 72 hours have been marked by the question, where is the outrage? This following the six people shot on Saturday in downtown Indianapolis. Today I had a chance to talk to the mayor and police about what's next as we take a closer look on this issue. What more can be done? The Indianapolis of FOP yesterday joining the Reverend Harris said, where's the outrage? Are you outraged, sir? And what more can be done in light of something that these officers behind you are, they're doing their jobs every day, but what more can be done? Well, let me just say, uh, I am uh, outraged, but uh, I would choose to use the term uh, saddened and deeply disappointed uh, at the tragedy that occurred uh, downtown uh, this past weekend. Um, the truth is, uh, I'm told 40 officers at the very uh, moment of the uh, incident were in the mile square, and that... Um, Several officers were on the scene before any 911 uh, calls were made. So we had IMPD officers responding immediately, even faster than people could get on their telephones. Um, so I think uh, what we are planning on doing, and I, I defer to the, the chief in terms of the plans for this weekend. I know we're going to engage our bicycle patrol units yes, uh, in ways that perhaps uh, typically are not engaged. Uh, and we'll obviously have a, uh, a significant presence. But to get to the, the, to the questions that were being asked yesterday, um, you know, I do think that community involvement uh, and community buy-in is critically important. The IMPD does uh, a wonderful job. You know, in spite of the tragedy, in spite of the tragedy, downtown remains one of the safest neighborhoods in our community. And so we mustn't forget the good work that IMPD is doing, not just in that neighborhood, but throughout all neighborhoods. And uh, deploying more resources this weekend, I think, can assure people that our downtown remains safe. We're looking forward to a great Circle City Classic. It's always an annual event that draws a lot of people, but people who are looking for uh, a great football game, great bands, great parade, uh, and so, um, Chief, am I leaving anything out in terms of our plans for this weekend? No, uh, I, I agree totally with the mayor with what we're doing. Uh, one thing I would like to say, though, uh, besides the community buy-in, I would like some parental buy-in there as well. You know, know what your kids are doing, know where they're at. Uh, ask yourself, do they need to be down there at certain hours? In 1999, adult volunteers patrolled inside the mall in an effort to curb the problem. That effort was a short-term program. Coming up on the news at 7, open new roads too late and traffic becomes a nightmare. Over them too early, you can cause permanent damage. How one university is helping INDOT with that balancing act. But first, let's check in with Kevin Gregory. And an evening that's comfortable. 77 is our temperature, and you can see a little bit of an orange glow right there. Should be another good-looking sunset in spots. We still have some downpours, too. We'll find those for you coming up and refined Atlas SE with technology. This is RTV6 News at 7, working for you. The sales of CBD products continue to be on the rise. It's expected that sales will hit $1.8 billion by the year 2022. A lot of CBD products claim to have zero THC, but Annie Taylor reports that might not be the case. 
21% of the products that we tested labeled as THC free, where we were still able to detect THC in those products. Tyler Despain and his team at Ellipse Analytics recently tested CBD only products and found trace elements of THC, the part of the cannabis that gets you high. If it says THC free, that's really making a strong claim that there's no THC in the product, which is a much bigger problem. A bigger problem because of what happened to people like Tammy Allen. I tested positive for THC and I ended up um, being put on administrative leave. That's because the CBD product Tammy was using claimed to be THC free, but it wasn't. It looked as if I had just smoked pot, like I had just done pot. Here's the thing, the government does allow CBD products to have a small trace amount of THC, 0.3% to be exact. So although the product might not get you high, it could show up on your drug test. Just because the certificate says zero THC or less than some amount of THC, the consumer's always going to carry that risk. While many companies do their own independent testing, there's no regulatory oversight by the government on certain products. Until you really have the trust and know and you're always going to take a risk. It's going to be enough people losing their jobs, losing their pensions, you know, ending up in those terrible situations that's really going to push the need for regulation. And that was Annie Taylor reporting. Thank you, Annie. It is frustrating to get bogged down in a traffic as a result of construction, but now Purdue is developing ways to get things back open faster after road work. Engineers at the university are doing it with these sensors as part of a col collaboration with INDOT. They've embedded the sensors into Indiana highways to more precisely determine when concrete pavement is ready to handle heavy truck traffic. A traffic can build waiting for pavement to be ready, but opening roads too soon after new concrete is paved can cause it to crack, so the sensors should help get it all right. Now at 7, we are on the road. We hope to some rain hopefully. Let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Kevin Gregory. What's ahead? It just makes me think of the road sensors for temperature, right? Yeah. And we start talking about when a bridge, bridge is going to freeze and that kind of stuff. We Not ready for that. Not yet. Not ready for that. But they're there when we need them. Temperatures, road temperatures will be quite warm early next week, probably pushing 100 degrees because our actual temperature will be in the upper 80s. That's the trend. Tomorrow's still cool. Next 24 hours are great. Then as we get to Friday and beyond, temperatures continue to climb, not just for us, the eastern two-thirds of the country. They'll be cooler out west. We'll have warmth in the Midwest and temperatures pushing record warmth. As you look at these temperatures here, record each day, 89 degrees. And you can see oh so close Monday and Tuesday. The warmest temperature we've ever recorded in the month of October is 91. That's certainly within arm's reach. Here's a down pour just to the west of Martinsville, moving to the north and east. These have been hit and miss. If you're counting on rain, don't count on it. Just feel lucky if you do get a shower this evening. That's how few uh, showers exist right now at this hour, and I think they'll continue to diminish as we get uh, past sunset, which isn't too far from now, less than a half hour or so. 76 in Anderson, 72 in Cass County for Logansport. Temperatures down to the south did hit 80 degrees, and Indianapolis did as well. It's 82 right now in Bedford. Temperatures comfortably cool in the morning. will be dry tomorrow. Temperatures mid 50s to start the day. The wind will be out of the northwest and that will keep our temperatures below average for one more day or about average and then significantly warmer as you can see on Friday to end the work week and build our temperature momentum through the weekend. Tomorrow at noon we're at 70 degrees. Afternoon highs staying in the 70s. Lots of sunshine Northwest wind around 10. Temperatures Thursday range from lower 70s tomorrow to the upper 70s to the south. As we get to Friday, still lots of sunshine, noticeably warmer, and the humidity will start to climb, and that will continue as we go into the weekend. The wind will be strong, 20 to maybe 30 miles per hour. Friday night football games, if it comes down to a field goal, look out. You could have a little challenge there because of the wind. There are the high temperatures expected. A warmer night for Friday night football but likely a dry night temperatures at kickoff 81 degrees be in the 70s throughout the game temperatures as we go into the weekend and beyond will be in the 80s and looking even beyond the seven day forecast there indications are through the first full week of october will maintain above 
average temperatures. Looking good. Hopefully you'll get some rain. Hopefully. I could use some rain. Could you use some rain in your car? Oh, yeah. We'll be right back. RTV6's Hiring Hoosiers finds yet another avenue for you to apply for employment. Getting a job is now as easy as asking Alexa. McDonald's launched a new app today called App Apply Through. It works with Amazon's Alexa and Google Assistant. You just have to say, help me get a job at McDonald's and it will connect you with the app. It will ask you where you want to work and then offer you some open positions. The app will ask for basic contact info and then you'll get a text with a more formal application sent to you. For example, Alexa, what's Kevin Gregory's forecast? <laughs> That's where I step in to answer. <laughs> Check this out this morning. Kathy West took a great picture looking east and that stunning sunset or sunrise. Sunset might not be too bad looking either. Why bother with Alexa? I got Kevin. See you tonight at 11 with Mark and Amanda.